Well, that's a blast from the past, but she's right. Five is still alive. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today, we're going to take a look at another five tools that I found while, yes, Googling deep once again. So let's take a look at these five tools and see if any of them pique your interest. So if you're new to this channel, you're probably wondering what the hell is Googling deep? For me, it's getting into the bowels of the internet and finding unique tools that I think might be either a valuable addition to my shop or I think the beginning woodworker might find interesting for their shop. In other words, it's just an excuse for me being lazy, getting on the internet and finding a few unique items for my shop. So just like a prostate exam, we're going to go deep and see what we find. Let's take a look at our first item. So our first item today is something that I'd never seen before. It's a tape measure, but it's no ordinary tape measure. It's a tape measure that allows us to create perfect arcs on our work pieces or perfect circles. This is great for when you're doing things like round table tops. So let's get into the package and see what it's all about. So our first item today is the rock steel rotating tape measure. What the hell is a rotating tape measure? Well, let me show you. So inside this package, it comes with two items. It comes with the tape measure itself, as well as a little needle that you place directly in the center of that tape measure. If we look at the tape measure itself, you can see that it functions just about like any other tape measure. You pull it out to extend it, and you press the tab to bring it back in. There are a couple of differences, however, with this tape measure. If we pull it out, you can see that it starts at three and a half inches. And this is because you're actually measuring the radius of a circle. So this means that the minimum size circle that you can create with this tape measure is a circle with a seven inch diameter. But you may be asking how large of a circle you can create with this tape measure. Let's find out. So if we pull the tape measure all the way out, you can see that it goes to about an 80 inch radius. So this means you can create a circle that's 160 inch diameter. Now that's a big circle. Not quite sure why you need to go that big, but maybe you're making a round deck or something. Now if we look at the very end of this tape measure, you can see there's a round area where you can place a pencil. And there's a little nut here where you can tighten it down to make sure that your pencil's installed. Now one thing I did want to mention with this tape measure is all this hardware is plastic. So I'm a little bit disappointed with that. However, for this price, this is about what you can expect. So let's test this out. We'll place the pin in the center of this circle and we'll draw a seven inch circle and then a 10 inch circle. And then we'll take a tape measure and see how accurate this thing is. So first off, I wanted to say that this thing maneuvered around that arch very smoothly. It held its center very securely and there was very little wiggle room for your pencil as you made that circle. But none of this will matter if those circles don't have a 7 inch diameter and a 10 inch diameter. So let's go measure them up. Well I'm happy to say if we measure our first circle, we're right at 7 inches. And if I extend it to the exterior circle, we're right at about 10 inches. Now this may have a little bit of wiggle room, approximately a 64th or a 32nd of an inch, but this thing is pretty accurate. But there's another feature of this tape measure as well. If we look at the very back of the tape measure, there's a little lip here. This lip is used to rest against the edge of your workpiece so that you can scribe lines down your workpiece. So this tool seems to work pretty well. I do, however, have two concerns about this tool. The first concern is the plastic hardware. Now I'm afraid that this plastic hardware will eventually strip. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place a pencil in that hardware and then I'm just gonna let it sit in there. The second thing is the metal pin. Now there's nowhere to store this pin on this tool and I assume I'm probably gonna lose this pin. However, I'm sure you could just use a nail if you lose this thing. Although not perfect, that's a pretty cool little tool. Now let's take a look at our second tool, which I'm gonna go keep over at the drill press. So I'll be the first to admit that my shop is a complete mess right now. And that's because I'm getting ready to do a major upgrade and redo everything in my shop. And when I do this upgrade, I'm gonna organize everything. But in the meantime, I have some problems. So underneath my drill press, you can see that I have a lot of bits just scattered around. And this has always been a problem for me. I use a bit and I'll place it down and then I'll forget where to place it back. And the main reason for this is because when I go back to organize those bits, I have no idea what size they are. And that's exactly why I bought this next tool. Let's go check it out. So I rummaged around my drill press and I found all these bits that don't have a home. Ideally, I'd like to place them in an organized container like this one that clearly labels what each size is. And that's exactly why I purchased this drill bit gauge. And this drill bit gauge goes all the way from 1 16th of an inch all the way up to a half of an inch. And this also has metric as well as imperial. 
So by trial and error, you can take a drill bit, place it into one of those holes until you find the corresponding hole. And in this case, we're right at 11 30 seconds of an inch. And one thing to note when using this gauge is you're not looking for the smallest hole that the bit will fit all the way through, but you're looking for the largest hole where this will just peek through. So in just a few moments, you can grab a pile of bits that you have no idea what their size is and get them organized to where they need to be. Well, this little guy is gonna be a great addition to my shop. I was able to properly measure every single one of my loose drill bits in my shop in just a matter of a couple of minutes. So if you're like me and you got a bunch of loose drill bits laying around your shop, go ahead and pick up one of these guys. The other nice thing is this thing is made of metal, so this thing will last a while. So since we're talking about drills, I wanna talk about our next item, which could either be used with a handheld drill or a drill press. In my shop, this little set will live over at my drill press, which is nice because it's right next to my sanding station. So one of the highlights of my sanding station is this rigid combination belt and spindle sander. The problem is 99% of the time I have the belt sander on it, and it can be a real pain in the ass to switch this over to a spindle sander. You have to undo a bunch of knobs, change the drum out, and even find the corresponding sandpaper that you need for the drum. And that's why I purchased this next item. It's an on-the-go, easy way to switch out your drill press to a spindle sander without a whole lot of effort. And this item is the Powertech quarter-inch drive sanding drum kit. Let's open this box and I'll show you what it comes with. So inside this box, you can see that there's four drums that come with this kit. There's a large drum as well as a small drum and everything in between. Along with that, you get four sets of sandpaper. There's a 60 grit, an 80 grit, as well as two 120 grits. And inside of these grits, you can see that there's sandpapers for each one of these drums. Now the size of these drums range from a little under a half of an inch all the way up to one inch exactly. And I imagine I'll primarily be using the larger drum. Now the way that these drums work is they're made from a firm rubber-like material. You simply slide over your sandpaper and then you tighten the nut on the very top. And these turn counterclockwise to tighten them down, which is a little counterintuitive. Now when you're tightening the nut at the very top, it's putting pressure inward towards that drum. This is forcing the drum outward and securing the sandpaper to the drum. Once you have that sandpaper attached securely to the drum, you simply place it into your drill press or hand drill and you have an automatic spindle sander. So the ease of switching out your drill press to a spindle sander really is all about efficiency. This allows you to keep your belt sander on your belt sander and go back and forth between the spindle sander and the belt sander without providing a whole lot of effort. Not to mention, I really like the carrying case that this set comes in, so you can keep it securely stored away right at your drill press. Now they do sell sandpaper kits for this set, which is an added bonus, because I imagine after a little bit of usage, you will need to replace those sandpapers. Well, that's three items down and only two left to go. As a reminder, for all the tools we're taking a look at today, I'm gonna leave links in the description below so you can go check out these tools for yourself. Also, before we move on to our next tool, I ask you to do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment, as it really does help out this small woodworking channel. So our fourth tool that we're gonna be taking a look at today is another tool that we're gonna be using over at the drill press. And this is a great tool if you use any screws in your projects. Now you may like the look of screw heads in your projects, but I don't think most woodworkers do. They tend to cover up these screw heads with things like dowels. And these dowels can be very expensive and it can oftentimes be very difficult to find a perfect match in wood. Now in a previous video, I showed you how you can make some wooden dowels out of some scrap wood in your shop. However, a lot of times you really wanna match that wood. And that's what this next tool is all about. So this next tool is an eight piece plug cutter. Nope, not that kind of plug. So this eight piece plug cutter set comes with eight different bits for four different sizes. Let's open it up and take a look at it. So if we take a closer look at the bits that come in the box, you can see that there's eight different types of bits. And these have sizes of five eighths, one half, three eighths, and one quarter inch. You can also see there's two different types of bits. There's the claw cutter as well as a chamfered cutter. So what's the difference between a claw cutter and a chamfered cutter? Well, I'm not a plug cutter expert, but if we compare the two bits, you can see that the claw cutter is much more shallower in depth. And if we take a look at the chamfered cutter, we can assume that this is gonna make a larger plug. But let's put these bits into our drill press and see how they work. 
So for this example, I'm gonna make two cuts with a chamfered cutter and two cuts with a claw cutter. I'm gonna make all four of these cuts on this piece of scrap 4x4 and then we're gonna cut them out over at the bandsaw. So let's get started. So if we take a look at the four plugs that we just created, you can see that the claw cutter creates a much more shallower plug. If we look at the chamfered cutter, it creates a much deeper plug. So my suspicions were correct. So by taking these plugs over to the bandsaw, we can cut these out and see how they look. And you can see by making that cut how much shallower the claw cuts are versus the chamfered cuts. And you can see how nicely these half inch plugs fit into these half inch holes. So having a nice plug cutter set like this is a great way to save a little bit of money by not having to buy those expensive dowels. You can also perfectly match your wood because you can cut those plugs right out of the wood you're working on. So that's four items so far and only one more item to take a look at. Now this next tool is made by Amazon Basics. So I'm sure Amazon.com farms all of its tool making out to other companies, but this next item had a little bit of a variation in its design on a tool that I use on a daily basis. So you probably have some of these mouse sanders laying around your shop, and if you're like me, you probably have a couple of them. Now the nice thing about these sanders is they perfectly hold your orbital sandpaper, but sometimes you're not using orbital sandpaper. What if you want to use some of the cheaper sheets of sandpaper? That's what this next tool accommodates. So this is the Amazon basic sanding block. Let's take a closer look at it and see how it works. If we take a closer look at this sanding block, you can see that it has a nice rounded profile on one side. This is so that you can comfortably hold it as you're using that sanding block. If we flip the sanding block around, you can see that there's a flat bottom where your sandpaper will rest. If we look at the sides of the sanding block, there's two jaws that open up with three metal pins that will hold your sandpaper in place. So this sanding block takes a quarter sheet of sandpaper. So let's go cut a sheet down and see how it fits into the sanding block. So all you need to do to place the sandpaper into this block is to place the sandpaper into one side where those three metal teeth are and make sure it locks into that sandpaper. Then you turn the sanding block around and do the same thing on the other side. Then your sanding block is ready to go. So not only can these sheets of sandpaper be more cost effective, but they also don't have the problem that you have with a lot of your orbital sandpaper where the holes can tear out and then you can have all sorts of issues with scarring up your workpiece. In fact, as recently as yesterday, I created a blemish on a workpiece caused by the tear out on this orbital sandpaper. Well, I hope you enjoyed checking out these five tools with me today. I know I enjoyed showing them to you. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment, as it truly does help out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.